Okay, so please start now. Okay. First of all, I am I am very much thankful to organizing secretary and also the organizing committee of 20 days, one day's national refresher course for giving me a, an opportunity to deliver a lecture on topic control of parasitic diseases under integrated farming system. All of you know that parasite is an organism which depend on their host metabolically means they drive their nutrition from their host on the leaves inside or on the body of their host. So during their infection or infestation on the host, they cause various pathogenic effects like anorexia means decrease their appetite, diarrhea that leads to imbalance the electrolytic balance, deficiency of different type of mineral or vitamin from their host, decrease milk production, reproductive capability, as well as drop power capability of the livestock. So ultimately loss, the economic loss of the farmers, which ultimately affect the economic of the country. There are various type of parasites which comes under mainly three groups. The helminth parasite, which mainly lives inside the gastrointestinal tract of the host. Another is ectoparasite, which lives on the body of the host. There are various types of ectoparasite, which mainly act as vector of many diseases, mainly like fly, flea, lice, tick and mites, mainly ticks act as a vector for many diseases. So many diseases transmitted through the ticks, so known as tick-bound diseases. And last group is protozoa. There are many protozoan parasites found in livestock, which cause losses of the animal in, in during the infection in terms of reduced milk production, reproduction capability of the infected animals, and even death of the infected animals. So during the parasitic infection in dairy animals, various scientists have reported the economic losses in terms of milk production, drought power capability, as well as expenses occurs during the treatment by the chemotherapy. Then, how we can control the parasitic infection? How we can control the parasitic? There are various methods or techniques by the aging we can control the parasitic infection. First is chemotherapy. There are various chemical compound or drug is most important depends an effective control measure to control the different parasitic infection. Then various organisms are also used as a biological control to control the parasite or their vector. Intermediate host control. As you know that various organisms like a snails and ectoparasite like flea Ticks act as a vector for the transmission of the or complete the life cycle of the various parasite. Like you know, plasmodium. Plasmodium is a hemoprotozoan parasite. The vector of the plasmodium is mosquito, that is female anopheles mosquito. Similar to diseases which affecting the life first of like trypanosoma, babesia, thaleria is economically important hemoprotozoan is 
transmitted from one host to another host through the vectors like fly or ticks. So by controlling these vectors or fly or ticks, we can control the parasite. Then immunological control. However, there is vaccine preparation is tough against the parasite because there are antigenic variation. There are some of the parasite has more than thousand type of antigen. So vaccine preparation is tough against the parasite. However, some of the vaccine has available commercially for the control of the parasite. Then pasture management is the important method to control the parasitic infection in livestock under integrating farming system because parasite found inside the body or on the body of the host the parasite when found inside the body like worms helming the their stages like eggs are excreted through the feces in the environment and come to the pasture then on the pasture they develop into infective larva so during the grazing livestock get the pick up the parasitic infection or pick up that infective larva and infected infection to get the parasitic infection so we can controlling the pasture management we can use the pasture management we can control the parasitic infection then managemental control measure under the management control measure by cleaning the animal shed animal houses we can control the parasitic infection then genetic control this is the important method because various livestock various animal have resistant for different type of parasitic infection so by using this parasitic resistance breed by using cross breeding program to develop resistant parasitic resistant breed we can control the parasitic in, in infection or infestation then in symbiote control this is the another important and safer method to control the parasitic infection endosymbiont is an organism which are found in many of the parasites inside the parasite which help in the nutrition and various metabolic process like reproduction of re, help in reproduction of the various parasite so we, we can control the endosymbiont like volvichia volvichia is a gram negative bacteria which is found in various parasite which help in nutrition and the production of the various filarial nematodes parasites or various insects which act as a vector for the various parasites. So by controlling the Volvichia, we can control the parasite population in, inside the livestock. Then one by one, we discuss the different method to control the parasitic infection. Under the chemotherapy, this is the most common and most important weapon are regularly used and it is still considered as most important method to control different parasitic infection. In chemotherapy, various chemical drugs, chemical compounds are usually using to control the parasitic infection like enthelmintic, insecticide, acaricide, antiprotozoal drug. But some of the drawback is associated with this chemical enthalmentic yeah, chemical anti antiparasitic drug because the regular or long term use of this 
chemical anti-parasitic drug lead, lead to drug resistance problem and as well as some of the drug residues are excreted through the milk which are not useful for the drinking. So anthelmintic is the drug which kills the helminth parasite or expel the helminth parasite from their livestock. There are different group of helminth or anti-helminthic like imidathiazole, benzimidazole group, rifoxanide group. So here we are included some of the important helminthic anthelmintic drug used to treat the virus code and trematode. These are the helminth parasite. Fenmendazole is the common drug which are the safe, safe drug or in pregnant animal also to treat the nematodes commonly known as rod one, tape one that is known as cystode. Then paracetamol is the some of the costly drugs usually used to treat in case of parasite found in case of dog. Then oxyclozanide is the drug of choice or triclabendazole is commonly used against the Fasciola infection which is the commonly found in our country. Fasciola is commonly known as liver flu. Then, then one of the important process routinely followed by the farmers that is deworming. Deworming is a process in which we use the anthelmintic drug to prevent the parasitic infection. But always use in consult with the veterinary physician. Round worm in case of to prevent the round worm infection in animals we use first anthelmintic at the age of 10 days of age of the animal then after monthly interval up to six months then after six months after two month interval we can use anthelmintic drug to prevent the different type of helminth parasite like nematode, cystode and trematodes. In case of liver fluke, liver fluke is commonly infection occurs during the rainy season because it requires an intermediate host to complete their life cycle that is a snail. The snail is the intermediate host for the fasciola, which is commonly known as liver flu. So, anthelmintic are used before the monsoon season to prevent the liver flu infection in case of livestock. Some of the anthelmintic, you can see some of the anthelmintic act as an immunomodulator because immunomodulator is help to faster recovery of the animal or faster expulsion of the parasite from the parasitic infection. One of the important enthalmentic that in levamisol is commonly act as enthalmentic as well as immunomodulator. So pharmaceutical company usually prepare drug Levamisol with other anthelmintic because levamisol is immunomodulator to enhance the immunity of the host livestock to prevent the parasitic infection. There are different methods to drench the different anthelmintic like drenching by feeding with the different type of feed, use tablets, some of the anti-parasitic drug are used as an injection that is ivermectin dora. Ivermectin is a not a anthelmintic, but it is an antibiotic because it's extracted from a fungus that is 
इम्पोर्टेंट ड्रग वी कैन यूज टू कंट्रोल इक्टो पारासाइट एज एज वेल एज इंडो पारासाइट देन कम टू इंसेक्टिसाइड इंसेक्टिसाइड इज ब्रॉड टर्म वी कैन यूज द ड्रग और केमिकल व्हिच यूज टू किल द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ इंसेक्ट जनरली इंसेक्ट एक्ट एज कॉज टू टाइप ऑफ लॉसेस फर्स्ट is direct losses by infesting the animal by sucking the blood of the infested host and as well as disturbance in that their feedings as well as cause paralysis in the their host this is the direct loss but ectoparasite also act as a vector for the transmission of the various diseases like hemoprotozoan disease thalariosis babesiosis trypanosomiasis so different type of insects transmit the diseases various type of disease then ectoparasite is a narrow term which act as against the ectoparasite which is that tick cell mite the drugs which act against tick cell mite are called ectoparasite because tick cell mite are different comes in the different order that is order acrina so the drug which act against tick cyanide comes under the acrina this is the different method by using the acrina by applying on the rib of the a spinal cord of the live stock by applying the different type and say of the body of the host then dipping of the dipping in the insecticides this is the different method we can use the insecticide this is the different group of insecticide we can use to control the ectoparasite like fly flea ticks and mite so we can ultimately control the different diseases transmitted by the this insects then come to anti protozoal drug various type of anti protozoal drugs various type anti protozoal drugs available which is effective against the economically important hemoprotozoal parasite haleria is an important hemoprotozoal parasite haleria is an important because it leads to loss of milk production which ultimately economic losses to the farmer as well as death of the infected animals in untreated cases trypanosoma is also and hemoprotozoan parasite which causes this sarra which is the prevalent disease in our country and also as another country also then babesia babesia is also a hemoprotozoal parasite and leads to common symptom is red bartter disease in which coffee color urine comes through the infested host which and drug of choice of babesia babesia is diminagenes red so these are the three important hemoprotozoal parasite that is haleria trypanosoma and babesia and these are the drug which are effective or drug of choice against that this parasite by using this drug we can control the parasite these are the anti protozoal we have already told that Cunaparamin sulfate is effective against Trypanosoma. That is, Dimena genus is drug of choice of Babesia, hematoprotozoan parasite, 
and that the bupar vaccine is effective against the thalerial parasite. Then come to chemoprophylaxis. Then chemoprophylaxis is a chemical which prevent the by using we can prevent the infection in the livestock. Some of the chemical have chemoprophylaxis action. Generally, vaccine when we vaccine, use vaccine as a immunoprophylaxis to prevent the infection. But chemo, some chemical is used to prevent the infection is a, like cunaparamine chloride. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Up Kangi. Am I edible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are absolutely out. Okay, okay. Thank you. Then come to chemo menoprophylaxis. Then this is another method to control some of the parasitic infection. In the chemoprophylaxis, we use only chemical to prevent the infection. But in chemoimmunoprophylaxis, we use chemical as well as some of the antigens to prevent the infection. This is the infection treated method in case of thalaria infection. Tick act as a vector. Thalaria is a hemoprotozoan parasite which is transmitted by the tick. Infective stress as are asprozoid which are inoculated, inoculated into host during blood sucking of the tick. So asporozoite stage by excreting the asporozoite stage from the tick, infection has been given to the host, then infection can be controlled by the chemical that is oxytetracycline. Then immunity developed in the livestock to prevent the thalaria infection for long duration. So this is the infection method in which by giving the infection, we can control the infection by the chemical, then develop immunity to prevent the thalaria infection in the livestock. This is the chemoimmunoprophylaxis method. Then come to immunological control of parasitic infection. This is the method. We use vaccines to control different parasitic infection. This is the economically economical method to control infection. But initial cost is much la much more. But long duration immunity develop. This is the sustainable control method to control different parasitic infection. Although vaccine preparation is tough against the different parasite because I have already told antigenic variation is common character found in many parasite so we cannot identify anti most antigen it which initiate the which by which can inoculate in the host but some of the vaccine available commercially we can use to control the parasite. As for Russia T is developed by the National Dairy Development Board and marketed by Indian Immunological is used against the thalerosis. Thalerosis is the dreadful and economically important disease, especially in case of dairy animal, which affect mainly cattle. Then coccidiosis is another protozoan parasite is mainly important main hurdles 
is ubiquitous in poultry industry. This is the drawback of poultry industry. Poultry industry. So coccidiosis can be controlled by using vaccine, co-vaccine, liver box. Then some of the vaccine available against the tick. I have told tick cause losses, two type tick, direct losses by because ticks suck blood from the infected a infested host and lead to anemia that is loss of blood as well as tick paralysis in the host as well as create wound which are contaminated with different bacteria and and another losses created by the tick is various diseases transmitted by the tick i have told malaria is transmitted by ticks Babesia is trans also transmitted by tick. So, thaliosis and babesiosis can control by controlling the tick. So, some of the tick vaccine is available commercially. So, by using this tick vector, we can control the tick population. This tick vector reduces the egg laying capacity, egg hatching capacity of the different tick. So ultimately control the tick population. Dictol vaccine is available to treat the lung worm. Lung worm is important. Helmic parasite nematodes, which found especially in calf, which cause hacks and hose disease, pneumonia. So we can using Dictol, we can control Dictyocolus, baby parasites, helminthic infection. This is that the vaccine available to control different type of insects. Then third method to control parasite intermediate host or vector control by, as you know that some, most of the parasites require either intermediate host or vector to control parasitic diseases like a snail. A snail that is commonly known as Kumbha is act as a intermediate host for various nematodes that is helmet like common parasite is fasciola, amphiostome, cytosoma. The intermediate host of this fasciola, amphiostome and cytosoma is a snails because some of the larval stages of fasciola, amphiostomes are developed inside the snail. This parasite cannot complete their life cycle without a snail. So, by controlling a snail, a snail population that is intermediate host of different helminth parasite, we can control the parasitic infection in the host. So, a snail can be controlled by different chemicals like copper sulfate, sodium pentachlorophenate. And as I have discussed previously, some of the ectoparasite, mainly ticks, act as a vector for many chemoprotozoan, bacterial, viral diseases. So by controlling tick population, we can control tick transmitted diseases like thaliosis, babesiosis, heart water disease and another bacterial and viral diseases. So by using insecticide, chemical as well as some of the herbal insecticide like neem leaf, crunch oil is act as a herbal ectoparasite tick drug. So by using chemical and, and herbal insecticide, we can control this vector. So then ultimately we can control the parasitic infection. Then come to endosymbiont control. This is the another important method by which we, we, we can control the 
some of the filarial nematodes and insects. Endosymbiote is mainly some of the bacteria act as a endosymbiote inside the filarial nematodes or fly. This in the endosymbiote help in nutrition, reproduction, and different metabolism of the parasite. Without this in this symbiont, this parasite cannot do different type of function. So by controlling this in, in the endosymbiont, we can control this parasitic infection because controlling of parasite is economical, safer, because this Bolbichia is the important endosymbiont. These are the role of endosymbiont. The help the parasite for different mechanism by providing nutrition, by providing nutrition for reproduction of the parasite. So this endosymbiont, like Bolbichia, is the important. Bolbichia is a gram-negative bacteria is an important in, in endosymbiote found in different type of filaria nematode like Oncocerca, Bicheria bancrafti, Dirofilaria imitis and different type of mosquito. So by controlling Bolbichia bacteria, we can easily control by the different type of chemical like doxycycline, doxycycline and tetracycline. We can easily control endosymbiote. So which disrupt the endosymbiont, which are found inside the parasite, we can ultimately control the parasite. That as for example, doxycycline treatment is 96% losses of Bolbichia and 99% losses of microfilaria. Inside the microfilaria of the filarial bulb, microfilaria is the larval stage of various filarial bulb. Inside the filaria, microfilaria, Bolbichia bacteria are found as endosymbiont by the using doxycycline drug, we can kill the Bolbichia, which ultimately kill the microfilaria because nutrition and various met metabolism is disrupted by killing the Bolbichia. So these are the some important control method. These are the advantage of endo endosymbiont control easy to control in symbiont in comparison to parasite because various type of resist antiparasitic resistance antiparasitic residues come to the milk and different milk or uh, different product of the livestock this is the cost effective the chemical which used against endosymbiont are chiefly these are less expenses in comparison to the parasitic control of antiparasitic drug. This are lead to short duration therapy, safer and no enthelmintic and insecticide resistance occurs due to control of the endosymbiont. So then come to some of the important Then come to trypanosoma because control is depend upon the parasitic different parasitic infection by knowing the different symptom, their vector. These are the Come to first important parasite, Tipinosoma. Tipinosoma is a hemoportozoan parasite found 
inside the blood of the infected host. This is the hemoprotozoa, thread and leaf like affected, some of the tipinosoma. There are various type of tipinosoma species, but most commonly affecting the livestock is even side. Some of the report available, it's genotic importance. First parasite is discovered, isolated from dairy smile Khan district of Parjan, presently situated in Pakistan by the Griffith Iban. This is the British veterinarian isolated from the house. This is the extracellular parasite means found outside the blood cells. This is found in the blood plasma. This affect livestock, domestic livestock, wild animal as well as laboratory animal. But most severe diseases occur in camel, dog, and horse. But it is transmitted through the tabernacle fly. This is the fly act as a vector for the transmission. So we can control the parasite by using the drugs against the tipinosoma parasite as well as by controlling the tabernacle fly. Because one of the important character of the tabernacle fly is successful transmission kind of cells if transfer of parasite can take place within few minutes after the bite because parasite do not survive in the process of life for more than 10 to 15 minutes. These parasites, this is the trypanosoma. The tabernacle flies by sucking the infected host take the trypanosoma inside the mouth. Inside the mouth of the tabernacle fly, trypanosoma are survive only 10 to 15 minutes. After 10 to 15 minutes, it can die. So, success, successful transmission only occurs by the tabernacle fly, any tabernacle fly bite within 10 to 15 minutes. The tip, so, tabernacle fly habit is interrupted. Period. It can bite the host interrupted. So this help in interrupted feeding of tabernacle fly help in transmission of the tabernacle fly. The disease caused by tabernacle uh, trypanosoma is sarra. Sarra means rotten because in this infected animal has become emaciated. So this is known as sarra. In case of camel, it is known as tibarsa because it disease persists in about three years. One of the important biochemical changes uh, we can diagnose it leads to hypoglycemia in the infected host means decrease in glucose level because it leads to malfunction of the different glands so this is the important symptom articular plaque in found in the host this is the important emaciation oedema abortion and intermittent fever, important clinical sign of survive intermittent fever. Means fluctuation of temperature. Then some of the infected animals have handling paralysis. Then in case of dog, important symptom is bilateral coronial obesity and changes of voice of dog is similar to rabies. The voice that appears in rabies is also appear in case of the sarra infected that is Tipinosoma evansi infected animals. In Tipinosoma evansi infection also occurs in cattle and buffalo. It also affects the production capacity, capacity of the animal because it leads to emaciations of the animals, circling movement, head pressing against the hard object, because nervous symptom occurs in this animal due to the hypoglycemia, paralysis of the hind quarter by the tipinosoma. So how we can this tipinosoma parasite tick infection mainly occurs in post rainy season that is August to October because tabernacle fly season, the tabernacle fly population occurs in population is breeding season of tabernacle fly. So tabernacle fly is much more increased in this season. So sarra mainly 
found in post rabies season because tabulus fly act as a vector for the transmission of tibanosoma vensai this is the important diagnosis method to identify because in case of parietal ophyllo mainly chronic cases are found by the preparation of blood smear sometimes does not come in the peripheral blood circulation so from the suspected animal take 0.5 ml of blood and inoculate intrapenetrally in the albino mice after 2 to 2 to 3 days blood smear prepared or bed drop smear prepared we can identify the diagnose the trypanosoma infection after 3 to 4 days in if suspected blood is positive then uh, then albino mice will be died then this is the drug which are the drug of choice we have already told quinaparamine chloride act as a immunoprophylactic drug which prevent the occurrence of the trypanosoma mensai that is disease sarda up to four months by using quinaparamine chloride we can prevent the occurrence of sarda up to four months so quinaparamine chloride is chemoprophylactic drug against the trypanosoma infection then trypanosoma is controlled by the controlling the tabulus fly by drug destroying the breeding habit habit using the insecticide in an animal around said proper disposal of feces because this legs on the feces of the animal so by by controlling the tabulus population we ultimately control the ticks then another Hemopotozoan parasite is thaleria. We have discussed it is economically important, which causes large amount of economic losses to the farmers as well as country. Thaleria is another hemopotozoan parasite which affects mainly cattle as well as goats, sheep, and goat. But it found inside the RBC. This is the thaleria parasite found inside the RBC. Thaleria is a tick-borne disease because it vector is a tick from the work from by the tick it transmitted from one host to another host. Important symptom. This is the species of the thaleria found. In different species of the animal, but most important is Thaleria nulata is found in our country as called bovine tropical thaleriosis in India. Its vector is the tick. The tick species is the Hyloma anatolicum anatolicum. This is the transmission. The tick stages has tick lay the eggs. Eggs lay the larva. Larva develop into nymph. Nymph after metamorphosis for adult tick. So, if one stage, if larva pick up the infection during blood sucking of the thaleria infected animal, then thaleria infection transmitted to the nymph, nymph transmitted to the adult. Every stage of the tick transmit the infection during blood sucking of the susceptible host. This is the known as a stage to a stage transmission found in the tick. This is the life cycle of the tick from the tick during that during the blood sucking asprozoite is the infective stage of thalaria inoculated in the host which after development develop into pyroplasma stage inside the RBC. Generally thalaria infection occurs summer and any season because tick population increase this season. So thalaria is a tick transmission disease, so transmission is mainly dependent on the tick population. So by controlling the tick population, we can control the thaleria infection in cattle mainly. The symptom of the thaleria is 
we can tentatively diagnose by this symptom. This is the high fever in case of Pipinosoma, fever is intermittent, but in case of Thalaria, fever is the high fever, enlargement of pre scapular lymph node, usually animal are unwillingness to feed and drink hemorrhagic diarrhea sometimes found in case of infected animal in calf. Usually coronial obesity are found in thalaria infected calf. This is the enlargement of the ascapular lymph node is the cardinal sign of the thalaria infection. This is the corneal obesity found in case of thalaria infection mainly in calf. This is the postmortem lesion is found in case of thalaria infected diadema that is necrotic punctures are found in animal. So by using drug of choice of thalaria is Pupavacin. We have already told Pupavacin is costly drug, it, but it is a drug of choice. It can be used for the control of the economical and dreadful parasite that is thalariosis, thalaria, which causes disease known as thalariosis. Another drug is cheaply drug is up available, but most important drug that is drug of choice is Buparvacuum. We have discussed chemino prophylaxis by using the infection and treatment method. We can immunize the animal and control the thalaria infection. Then some of the vaccine we have discussed, Racha vaccine use is revaccine every three year dose is three ml. We can immunize the animal against the thalariosis and prevent the thalaria infection in the cattle. Then control of thalariosis because it's a tick borne diseases, tick by controlling the tick, by tick when controlled by the mechanical method, by my manual removal of the tick from the host side, by using the ticks from the host, by using the acricide on the host body, as well as the animal set because 20% tick population are found in the host, 80% tick population are found in the animal sedates, their surfaces, holes, their walls. So we use insecticide in animals as well as animals say, so we can control the tick population fully. So ultimately control the different tick-borne diseases. Then another important hemoprotozoan parasite is Babesia, which is also found inside the RBC. This is the Babesia, usually found in pear. This is a small parasite, Thalaria and Babesia is pathogenic, most pathogenic, because a small parasite usually penetrates more in the host, different organ, different system of the host. Babesia is found inside the RBC. It first time discovered by Babes. It is also a tick-borne parasite. It is also transmitted from the tick. Tick it act as a vector. There are different type of Babesia species found in different species animal. Usually is found in single form inside the one RBC. In found in pair inside the one RBC. It found in four in number inside the one RBC, found 16 in number inside the one RBC, but mainly occurs in pair or inside the RBC of the infected blood of the infected host. Generally, two form of Babesia species are found, large form and small form. This is the large form depending upon the average length and angle that has formed by the pair Babesia acute or aptuous angle. This is the Babesia. This is the small form. This is the large form of Babesia species found in every species of the animal like cattle, sheep, goat, horse, dog, cat, this animal. This is the vector. This is the tick bone hemoprotozoan parasite. This is the species found in case of cattle. There are four species found in case cattle, at least two species found in 
every species of animal large part and a small one. this is the vector buchlas mark this is the species of the tick buchlas microclus in india transmitted by the babesia bigemina this is the babesia bigemina most prevalent babesia species in india this is the buchlas microclus is one host ticks means ticks development stage is larva nymph and adult so all the stages of ticks completed on the body of one host of the ticks larva egg develop into larva larva attached to the body of the host then larva after molting develop into nymph on some on the body of the host then nymph after some times some days for adult on the body of the host this is known as one host tick so we can easily control one host tick some ticks has three host ticks means three animal required larva require one cattle nymph require different another cattle adult required different cattle to complete their life cycle so in comparison to three host ticks like hyloma and tolcom and tolcom is a three host ticks here is buchlus microclus that is recently in rename as rhipicephalus microclus is one host tick so in comparison to three host ticks we can easily control the one host tick that is buchlus microclus because it completed its life cycle only one animal symptom of the babesia is the fever high fever then most cardinal sign is hemoglobinuria that is coffee color urine comes to the infected animal this is the cardinal sign so it is known as red water disease so it lead to anemia because it lysis of the rbc so hemoglobin is secreted out through the urine and so hemoglobinuria occur in different animal then hepatomegaly means enlargement of the liver then in enlargement of the spleen also this is the then in case of babesia generally babesia animals occur in adult animal in comparison to calf this may be problem to maternal antibody received from the colon colostrum generally and calf are immune to babesia infection generally babesia infection not occurs in and calf this is known as inverse age resistance babesia mostly occurs in cattle in comparison to buffalo but trypanosoma occurs mainly in buffalo in comparison to cattle but babesia is mainly occurs in cattle some of the babesia infection that is in case of babesia bovis infection it cross the blood brain barrier and leads to cerebral babesiosis one of the important clinical one of the important character of the babesia is babesia infection lead to pre, pre immunity that animal recovered from the clinical infection may continue to harbor infection and remain immune to pre infection pre infection means once the animal infected with the babesia it hardly to eradicate fully so it act as a carrier so carrier animal act as a pre immunity which prevent the further further infection up to certain year like haleria parva babesia it some of the pre immunity character found once the animal get the infection which prevent the first further infection after after the certain year if pre immunity break up then in animal susceptible for the further infection then coccidia is genus called coccidiosis is the important our uh, disease for the poultry industries it has direct life cycle no intermediate host required it cause chick mortality mainly and animals are most affected 
most hurdle in the establishment of the poultry industry because it's called chick mortality in the poultry industry. There are different type of coccidiosis, sickle coccidiosis, rectal coccidiosis, but most pathogenic or most common disease prevalent is sickle coccidiosis. And animals are susceptible, adults act as a carrier. It causes hemorrhages in the cecum. This is the cardinal sign of the coccidiosis. This is the symptom, dropping, feeding, generally immediate anella that is called sickle coccidiosis is bloody diarrhea. Bloody diarrhea caused by sickle coccidiosis that is caused by immediate anella is the cardinal sign. So, cough is smelly, coccidiosis occurs in calm, winter coccidiosis is caused by immeria juvenile, in which diarrhea, fall spelling diarrhea, diarrhea may be contained with blood or not, infected calf died due to heavy loss of blood. Number of anticoxiliar drug are available in case of poultry as well as calf, generally in case of poultry, anticoxiliar drug drugs are already available with the mixed with the feed, their feed. But coccidiosis is known as man-made disease because it mainly depends upon the management. It mainly depends improving the management I adopting the good management practices. Litter should be kept dry, feeding and butter crops should be kept such a height so they cannot be contaminated by dropping by 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 in, increasing the ventilation of the poultry houses. We can control this coccidia infection. We minimize the coccidia infection in poultry. So it is known as man-made diseases. Good ventilation is said reduce the moisture as process because moisture is help in the parasitic infection of these animals. Then liver fluke. Liver fluke is an important infection found in case of the cattle, buffalo, sheep, and goat, and leads to it. An important clinical sign is it is the snail borne diseases. It intermediate host is the snail from the infected host egg are excreted in the environment. Egg develops into Miracidium larva. Miracidium enter inside the snail. From the snail, Cercalia larva emerges. Cercalia emerges, insists on the aquatic vegetation and form metacercalia. Metacercalia is infective stage by, by ingesting metacercalia. Host cattle, sheep and goat get the infection during grazing by metacercalia infected, by feeding of metacercalia infected aquatic vegetation. This is the symptom of the fasciolosis that can be acute and chronic fasciolosis occurs during the infection. Then by controlling the a snail can be controlled by controlling the snail. We can control the liver flukes by duck rearing, frog rearing because both feed and a snail. So a snail population can be reduced by the duck rearing. Some of the important control of parasitic is the pasture management. Pasture management because parasite, different parasites are excreted through the infected host, different are excreted through the host on the grasses. So by managing the pasture, we can control the different parasite. Then another important parasite is Hemocus contortus. Hemocus contortus is voracious blood sucker, sucker parasite. It causes motility, maximum motility in case of the goat. This is the direct life cycle from the host Hemocus contortus egg is excreted in the environment, egg develops into the second stage larva. In the environment, they get developed into the third stage larva. By the during the grazing, sheep and goat get the infection by the ingestion of 
of the third stage larva during grazing so by managing the pasture pasture we can control the different parasitic infection without in pasture management we can use rotational grazing means and an animal and adult adult animals are cannot graze at a time because adult are act as a carrier and as and animals that is calf are susceptible for different both so young animals and adults and mother are graze in separately in different grazing field at least infected pastures should be rest for at least one year at least three to six months to free from the different parasitic infection because larva different larva of the helmin are died due to a starvation of the due to a starvation of the host so most of the important sign of the hemonchus contortus is anemia anemia can be controlled because it is a voracious sucker parasite it leads to anemia that is pale mucous membrane bottle jaw this is the important clinical sign of hypoproteinemia because it is anemia but important drawback for the chemical health and benefit is hemonchus contractus is most important helminth against various anthelmintic resistant problem have been reported so always use pharmacha method to treat the hemonchus contortus animal we match this hemonchus contortus infected animal with pharmacha chart only ya or either pcb is below 15 then then that animal should be given treatment this is the borderline this is the borderline of treatment this is the digestive this is better to this this pharmacha chart in this for 3 4 and 5 pharmacha chart we should use anthelmintic for the treatment so this is the all about of the control of parasitic diseases thank you hello hello thank you very much sir thanks thank a lot thank you all now if there are any questions uh, in the chat please ask participants can turn on their microphones so that they can ask questions i have enabled the microphone they can ask the questions via microphone or the chat any questions please ask so mostly thank yous coming in <laughs> thank you sir if uh, i think there are no questions uh, from the participants if there are no questions we can consider the session to be over on behalf of the uh, organizing committee as well as on behalf of the participants i thank you from uh, the bottom of our heart uh, sir we express our grat gratitude uh, for you to being with us and presenting such knowledge with insight into the subject thank you sir thanks a lot thank you thank you all the participant and our organizing committee thank you thank you everyone